So it's rough muffins for the Toronto Raptors, man. Just getting swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers and... I mean, unfortunately, Kyle Lowry not being able to play in two of the games is never going to help your cause, but... Even then, I don't know if anybody would have really picked the Raptors to beat Cleveland. Maybe push them to a game five or a game six, but... Beating him is a whole different story, and that's just kind of the reality of when you're going up against LeBron James in his prime. Toronto, they're damn good, but they're just not good enough to be a contending team like that. And we can talk about some of the things they do. Like, where do they really go from here? I mean, to me, I mean, immediately you re-sign Kyle Lowry to like 25 plus million dollars or whatever. Because, I mean, if they don't have him, then they definitely don't have a chance against any of the top teams in the NBA. Next, um, you re-sign Serge Ibaka, but I also wouldn't look to re-sign him for like $20 million or anything because the thing with Ibaka is his defense has declined as he's gotten older. Offensively, he has progressed as a shooter, but I don't think it's enough to where he can have like the monumental impact offensively. But also on offense, his playmaking is pretty much nothing. Like, he does not have the ability to catch the ball with some open room in front of him, put the ball on the floor, and then make a play out to someone when you bring help defense. Like, he can't do that at all. So I feel like his offensive limitations are still there on top of declining a bit defensively. So I would re-sign him because your other options at the four are not really there, but I also wouldn't break the bank for him either, and I wouldn't feel too bad if he was asking for like $20 million just to say, eh, I think we're just going to let you go. But besides that, I mean, you got to fire Dwayne Casey, man. Casey, I, I think he's done a good job with Toronto overall. Like he's instilled a good culture there. They seem to be a pretty close knit group. And I mean, he was the guy who took them from a team that wasn't winning that much to a team that is, you know, winning... 50 or more even more than 50 games and getting on playoff runs and all that so that's good but when we look at Casey's X's and O's I mean a lot of the time the Raptors offense just gets so slow especially in the playoffs to where there's going to be like 11 or 10 seconds left on the shot clock and then they're finally getting into their motion and even then their motion is just like setting a screen for Kyle Lowry or DeMar DeRozan it's not really productive offense. And a lot of the time, it just seems like their offense, especially in the bigger moments, it just dissolves. You know, like you might see some motion from them at the beginning of the game to open up the third quarter, but it seems like they always go back to these tendencies of just being a, a team that doesn't move the ball around as much as they should. If Kyle Lowry or DeMar DeRozan can't figure something out, then it's not always a, a good offensive possession. And you can't really win like that in the playoffs unless your best player is LeBron James. So I think getting Casey out of there for a more tactician style of a head coach. Now the thing is, I don't actually know who that coach is because I don't scout NBA head coaches. I make YouTube videos. I'm not an analyst who just Googles like offensive sets by guys in college and things like that. But you got to do some research and you got to find someone. I would kind of mirror this situation with him to like the one with Mark Jackson going f to Steve Kerr because it was like, yeah, Mark Jackson, he had the Warriors playing together and they were playing strong defensively and all that, but their offense was basic as hell. Steve Kerr comes in and suddenly they're moving the ball around much more. There's guys moving off of screens, off ball, cutting to the basket. Of course, the emergence of Draymond Green definitely helped that as well. I think Toronto needs a similar thing, man. Casey's the type of guy who can, you know, make you a better team, but I don't know if he can take you from a good team to a great team. Now, even if you do get another head coach for Casey who can give them more of a dynamic offense as well as be a bit better with rotations because I felt in the playoffs, I don't know, sometimes, like, he didn't realize Norman Powell was good until, like, a few games into the Bucks series where Powell should have been playing 25 minutes a game, plus for the moment the playoffs started. He had some weird power forwards playing in the playoffs, like you have Ibaka, Patterson, Damari Carroll, and Tucker, like those are your four power forwards and he was playing like one of the young guys or whatever. Just not ideal stuff. But um, besides that, I mean if we look at the roster itself, we can start with DeMar DeRozan. 
dude, like I understand that you've found a really comfortable place for yourself as being an inside scorer and a mid-range shooter and all that. Learn how to shoot threes because it's super valuable in today's NBA to be able to do that. I mean, I remember in the Bucks series, there were times when DeRozan would be standing on the opposite side of the floor and then some of the Bucks would help off of him because like, he's not going to kill you from the three-point line that often. And just having that shot would make the Raptors' offense even more dangerous. And that's not to say that DeRozan is still not an impactful player. Like, of course, he makes them a better team, and he is more than capable of going off for some big scoring performances, putting the other team in foul trouble and all that. But just don't be content, you know? Like, there's a glaring weakness in your game that's easier to extract in the playoffs, and correcting it would help this team out a lot. Uh, if we look at the small forward position, unfortunately, Damari Carroll just has not been the guy that they wanted since they signed him. Maybe it was because of the injury that happened in his very first season with them, where he only played like 20 games or so, but when he was on the Hawks, he was a, a knockdown shooter and one of the better defensive players in the NBA, and with Toronto, he just simply hasn't been that. Unfortunately, there are not too many replacements for him at the three. I mean, honestly, I would rather have P.J. Tucker at the small forward position than Damari Carroll because at least Tucker is one of the best on-ball defenders in the NBA. The job that he did on Giannis in round one was really damn good. Norman Powell is a nice defensive player, but he's a little too small to play the small forward position. So, I mean, I would have Tucker playing there next season. I would re-sign the guy. And then we can also talk about Valanciunas at the five. Um, defensively, he's just not that good. Unfortunately, it's... Very difficult to trade centers nowadays because if anybody's going to want a center, it's going to be a Nerlens Noel type, not a Valanciunas type of guy. I mean, in a perfect world, you would replace him with like a defensive, athletic center who can really protect the rim, defend pick and rolls and things like that. Maybe Jakob Pertl can become that guy for you, but if not, you do have some trade pieces on this team. You know, Pertl is one of those guys... Because as far as I know, people have said his defense uh, is pretty promising. Noguera is a decent rim protector, but overall defensively he's not that good. Maybe he can just simply get better. I don't know, you have a lot of young guys who I think have some potential. I mean, Pascal Siakam showed nice signs starting at power forward for them. For a rookie, I mean, Ibaka was clearly the better option, but... You know, for a guy in his first season, he did show some life as perhaps a defensive player. You're just going to have to hope that one of these guys really emerge because you're not going to have the cap space to just go wild in free agency to try to find yourself um, a defensive five. Now, the one guy who could get you one of those dudes and would probably give you the best chance would be trading Norman Powell. That one would be a tough pill to swallow because I think he's got potential to be really damn good and the Raptors just haven't used him enough. And I'm sure a lot of teams would love him as their starting two guard. But, I mean, I don't know. That one would have to be... You'd have to really feel good about the guy that you were taking in, whoever it may be. But these are all just possible moves that could or could not ever become available for them. Their young guys could never really take off. But they can control who their head coach is. And um, I think Dwayne Casey's got to go. I think you got to get someone who's just simply better with X's and O's. Someone whose rotations would tighten up a little bit more in the playoffs. And perhaps someone who could get into his guys a little bit more. I mean, there is something to be said about the Raptors' perhaps mental weaknesses in the playoffs by Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. These guys have lost a million game ones in a row. I don't know, maybe a new culture would help that out. Maybe it wouldn't, I don't freaking know. I'm not inside the locker room. But I do think Casey has worn out his welcome in Toronto. And then besides that, I mean, hope for some internal improvement by your young dudes. You do have some trade pieces. Your one real one is Norman Powell. Try to get yourself a defensive five. Unfortunately, you're in the same conference as LeBron James, and, you know, it's tough. <laughs>